All right, we're going to show you our new uh, sharpening attachment. Uh, there were some uh, problems with certain handle configurations rubbing, uh, getting interference up here with our tension arm handle, so we uh, figured a way to solve that problem. Uh, this is old man in front of the camera, and, and uh, not yet, but in camera guy, of course, my son Greg behind the camera. There, there's the old guy. Okay, back to this. I'm going to show you how I set this up. Uh, I have the long arm in here. Uh, you don't need it. You can do a short arm, but you have to cock the, uh, th this back a little bit to get your dimension. I'm going to show you how I, uh, how I get my angle. Now you can use this. Uh, this is an easy way to set up an angle when you're using a uh, large contact wheel. Uh, instead of the platen to do your grinding, uh, it, it's a little harder to set your angle accurately. We start off by establishing our angle. Now, I use a 10 inch length from the support bar to the area of the grind, which I'm putting, I, the area of my grind, I like to put about one inch behind this wheel because the belt's fairly rigid there. And uh, I set this up at a 10 inch length to the tip of the blade. Now I'm going to do a, a uh, just show you on the first one is this uh, piece of cutlery here. I do this at a, at a uh, 10 degrees. Uh, that's what I generally use when I'm sharpening cutlery or a slicing tool. Uh, and the length from the cutting from the cutting edge to the collar I set at 10 inches or approximately 10 inches. And I establish that by moving this collar back and forth on this shaft depending on the width of the blade. Uh, right now, uh, I've got a Norton X5 belt on. I'm going to take this off. Well, I didn't show you how to do the height. It's pretty simple. Uh, we're using the sign to establish an angle here. The sign of one degree at one inch is 17, th 17 and a half thousandths. So the sign of uh, one degree at 10 inches is 175 thousandths. So you multiply the number of degrees times 175 thousandths, and what you end up with is a dimension here. Uh, Greg's going to type these dimensions for 10 inch on uh, 10 inch. 10 degrees at 10 inches is 1.75 inches. 10 inches at 15 degrees is 2.625. 10 inches at 20 degrees is 3.5. 10 inches at 30 degrees is 5.25. Uh, shaving angles are normally uh, 5 or 10 to 15 degrees on a razor or anything that's, uh, uh, that you, you don't care about the durability of the edge. You're just principally concerned with sharpness. Slicing, as I'm going to do, set this uh, knife up here. Generally from 15 to 20 degrees, I tend to be on the bottom side of these. General use, 20 to 30 degrees, and chopping, 30 to 40 degrees. Everybody likes their own angle. Everybody picks what they want to do. Uh, That's what I do. That doesn't make it right. That just makes it what I do. You establish the by measuring to the top of your bar, to the bottom of the scale. And I've got that set at 2.65. You'll have to take my word for it. 2.65 inches for height. You can adjust this up and down to establish your angle. Now, this is a clamping tool. The cross section's quite thin. There's not a lot of threads in here, and the reason for that is, is there's just not a lot of room. If we make this big and bulky and thick, uh, then uh, you can't get your angle on small blades. So we kind of have to do the universal uh, dealer. So this is not, you don't just wrench this screw down because it's not a big screw and it's a fine thread. All this has done is to support this. Can you grab this and twist it? Yeah, it does not need to be so, so tight that you can't twist it. It's just if you can hold it like this, you've tightened it plenty. So what we're going to do is turn it on. Always have to run the belt in reverse. I've said that a bunch of times. If you got that blade coming for you and you happen to snag the blade or the belt with something or it just decides to give out, uh, it's going to sling it back at you. If the blade, if the belt is going away from you, then uh, you're relatively safe, as safe as you can be holding a sharp knife. I generally don't run the belt real fast when I'm sharpening. Uh, uh, this is running 
probably uh, uh, oh around a thousand oh let's see what we've got a 50 percent on this motor is 1750 so it's probably running about 12 1500 feet per minute all you do is lay it down gently slide it along the bar and you flip it over and the new design makes it so you don't have interference from the handle on a big bulky knife a buoy knife or something like that and this is all you've got you just keep going i go i go from a thousand grit up to two thousand grit and i just if i'm on a rough i use a 400 degree or 400 grit belt to establish the grind on a new knife and that's the sharpening process now uh we're gonna i'm gonna kill this and I'm going to move over to a large contact wheel and show you uh, some people like a slight radius or a little bevel. You can do it. It's kind of hard to stay right on the top of the wheel with a the, with the tool, but you can do it. So let me change over to a large contact wheel. Uh, we'll cut the video and, sh and come back to it when I make the change. All right, we're back again. If you look here, we've got a 10-inch contact wheel on. I'm going to show you something that's kind of unique to our grinder. This grinder's ability to track, make the belt track in the middle. Uh, when the belts run in reverse, many belts skew differently in reverse than they do forward. Uh, since we're running in reverse, in order to get to track here, the belt is hanging off the edge of the wheel. Well, we have a solution for that. The way you make this adjustment is, is you loosen, you leave this bolt here just slightly snug, and you loosen this one off. Okay? so it's free to rock back and forth. Now, if the belt's tracking over in this direction, I think you loosen this belt. I always get this backwards, but we'll see here. Yes, that's right. You loosen this one up a little bit. You'll figure this out real quick. And you tighten this one up till now we're tracking in the middle. What I'm looking for is the name of that roller. The tracking wheel. The tracking wheel, yeah. That's what happens to old men. You forget everything. Can't bring it to mind. All right, here we go. Now I can move this. I've got two ways of bringing this belt back. I can adjust it here, which leads it off the edge, or I can loosen up here, and I can move it over a little bit, or I can keep going. I put it back in the middle of the belt. Now it's easy to move that here, but I'm going to show you back here again. I can get it back by loosening that up. Give me this, loosen this just a little bit, tighten this just a little bit, and now I'm getting that back in the center. If this is in the center, that's in the center, and this is tracking right. Now, this tracking is not terribly important when you're sharpening because you're not putting a load on the machine. The feature, this feature really is more useful when you're doing a heavy grind. You want the tracking to be in the middle of the wheel because when you load the wheel, in forward or reverse either one it's going to climb so that's why belts come flying off of some grinders if they're not if they're not tuned properly and that's what this allows you to do on ours is is set that tracking wheel uh, in a, 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 a horizontal position with the belt in the middle so that when you load it it doesn't have a tendency to go one way or the other okay now back to sharpening uh, let me turn it off here oh. yeah okay and let's get our bar sharpener. Okay, we're going to slide this back in. Do the same thing here. And I want that set at two and five eighths inches. Okay, it's been suggested we make all these the same, unfortunately, that per, as you purchase parts, you don't have that option. I mean, we could custom build all our hardware, but then that would be quite expensive. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this at 2 and 5 eighths inches, because that's the same grind I want, to the bottom of the scale. Just kind of make this straight here. So I'm looking at the bottom of the scale, 2 and 5 eighths inches. Now, if I graduated this thing right here, it's different for every setup. In other words, 
you need to, if this is a bigger or a smaller wheel, the height would vary with the number of degrees. So that's why I choose to set it up this way. I can set my uh, 15 degree al angle up with this in any position. Okay, so now here we are. Uh, same knife. Let's put this off. I want to grind it my 10 inch. I can either grind off the, some people like to grind off the the top of the of the uh, radius. I like to buy it, grind just a little behind it. Again, it's the same process. Same with this. Now I'm going to shut it off. I'm going to put a different knife in it. Uh, well, I'll just show you. Uh, Well, I wish I had a clean surface to lay this on, which I kind of do here. Okay, loosen this up. Now we're going to grind a much thicker knife this time, so I'm just going to pull this off. If you want to go to a really thick knife, you can screw this set screw in to widen this gap so you grab it and a par you're parallel when you grab hold of the blade. I'm going to grab this one right here. Tighten it up. Now, you don't have to wrench the heck out of it. You just put it in and you tighten it up enough so that the blade doesn't wiggle. You don't have to grab it so tight you can't, can't move it. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move this blade down more this direction so it's in the, and I'm going to center it so that this point and this point are about equidistant in other words this point this point are about equidistant from here that keeps the blade the angle fairly consistent along the blade all right same thing reverse and this works just the same on the platen now one thing I didn't do and I'm just going to do this real quick uh, I don't want 15 degrees that's not slicing I want to go to uh, 20 degrees on this uh, that, that's three and a half inches so I set this down set this at three and a half inches lock it down all right, here we go. We're set up at 10 inches still. This knife has been sharpened so many times playing with it that I've, I've lost my fine edge here because this is getting thick because I've just sharpened it so many times playing with the sharpener. So. Let you stay very consistent on your grinds. And I apparently didn't get that quite tight enough. But it doesn't have to be very tight, and I tend to work on the, the not too tight end of it. I don't don't want to strip the threads out because there's no need to do it. Okay, there we go. And I'll take these blades. If I'm going to rough a grind in, I'll start out at 400 and I'll step it right up. 1,000, uh, uh, well, I go through four blades up, up to, or four belts all the way up to 2,000 grit. And then if you want, you can put a strop on it. I have a leather strap I can, or a leather belt, or you can put a felt, bat, felt belt and load either the leather or the felt with a compound and you can polish with it on the edge. We'll put this, the, uh, the, the information I told you about the slicing angles, the angle at a certain, we'll t at a certain dimension, and we'll put all that information on the screen, either in front or probably somewhere in the middle of the video. And I hope this helps. Uh, we're going to continue to do some more videos. We're, quite frankly, we're just so busy trying to put machines out, we just haven't had time to do the videos as we should.